presentation I'm doing all year because I get to present to my, you know, 117 odd agency bosses that, uh, that I have and get to do a report card of kind of what we've done over the year, but also walk you through the survey. So it's quite an interesting thing from a media nerdy point of view to see what's happening in the trends uh, and to see the results from everyone, but also we're going to use the opportunity to give everyone a, um, uh, an overview of, um, uh, of what we've been up to. Also as well, someone's going to win an iPhone 7, I think it is. Uh, no, it's an iWatch 7, I think it is, uh, today for filling out the survey. So I'm just going to kick on. Um, interrupt me uh, if you want to, I don't really care. And uh, I will answer any questions and kind of give you an update of where we're at. But first and foremost, it has been an absolute career highlight uh, and the most enjoyable thing I've ever done in my entire life, working on the IMAA and bringing this to life. And we've had an absolutely amazing 18 months of bringing this to life. And to the point where, you know, someone said the other day that we have accomplished more in 18 months than other industry bodies have accomplished in 18 years. And we've been internationally handed the gold standard in media organizations and been donned the fastest growing media organization in the world. And it's something to be really, really proud of. As I mentioned, I'm just going to give you a quick wrap up over a couple of slides of what's happened this year, the road ahead, and then also the Pulse survey. So first and foremost, thank you. Um, uh, first and foremost, thank you to uh, to my co-pilot, uh, Beck. Oh, to, well, firstly to the um, to the partners. So these guys keep the lights on for the IMAA, and it makes sure that you know the bills that we guys send you guys are very very minimal. Uh, and we get these guys to do the heavy lifting between us. We're only going to let through a handful. Uh, more like probably about seven next year, as we don't want logos on pages. We want people that have an active, um, uh, companies that have an active role in the ecosystem of media. So we're really excited to um, uh, to share the next partners through next year, but also be nice to these guys. We also work with the industry bodies, including the IAB. To, that comes around to more education, but we're really excited about that. Um, the leadership board and the board of directors, uh, these guys, so I just want to acknowledge these guys uh, for the great work that they've done throughout the year. I want to acknowledge my co-pilot, Beck Colson, uh, for, the, for her great work, her commitment and putting up with me. Thank you so much for all you do on behalf of everyone. Thank you so much to the directors uh, of the IMAA uh, for, you know, as a group, we started this. So thank you very much to you guys and the leadership team these guys meet every month. Now, every one of the leadership team and directors do not get paid. Do not get paid. They do this out of for the benefit of the industry and making our industry a better place. Uh, and that's something that, you know, that I wanted to personally take my hat off. I mean, the leadership team meet every single month. Uh, I probably talk to Ange and, uh, and Jackie, oh, and Ant and Fags and Tom and, and Phil, actually. I talk to them, if not every week, but every, um, uh, every month, definitely. So I just want to thank you to you guys for, for keeping the lights on, keeping the machine moving. And you're about to see some of the amazing things that we're working on and what, what we've been through. So what a year. We've gone from, I think probably this point last year, 50 odd members, where it was a, um, a emerging industry body to 117 members and the largest media organization now in Australia. And to the point where I was at the agency symposium last week and the IMAA was being spoken about there in a room of holding companies left, right and centre from the uh, from the MCs to the people through the speeches to definitely everyone that I spoke to just spoke so highly of the IMAA. So we're really excited for you guys. You know, this is not one one organisation. This is all of your organisation. So it's something we can all be proud of. And it's amazing. It is truly beautiful to see what has become of this of this organization in the past 18 months to think that 18 months ago there was 20 and now there's 118 so over the year and capturing everything you know we've supported everyone where possible through free legal support free hr free financial support we've built uh, a network with the network one so everyone has a truly global footprint for their clients should they need support overseas we've challenged government legislation not only we've been in Canberra talking to Minister Paul Fletcher, but last Tuesday night, Aunt Cole Revy and myself had dinner with uh, the Premier of New South Wales, Mr. Uh, Dominic Protégé, and also uh, my 
my foe, um, uh, Victor Dominello, who we had dinner with. And uh, I look forward to reporting on where that conversation is going soon with that. But that is an absolute uh, game changer to have his ears talking about why the New South Wales government and the federal government should support Australian-owned businesses. Sorry, I get a bit passionate about this. Next, we've also rejuvenated our website and we're going through several phases, but we're gonna put a job board on there. We're gonna have an education hub. Uh, we're going to do a number of advancements to it. We've also got a YouTube channel uh, and the website, uh, the, the emails that we put out to you guys, we're investing a lot. Beck does a great job with the communications now. And then finally, we're providing guidance and we're here as a central point of your support. So if you need that 5,000 pound gorilla in the media forest to help you out with anything, that's what we're here to support you guys for because we do this for you. So we've single-handedly changed the profile and changed the media landscape. And just looking at some of the stories, now we've just stopped focusing on stories about um, um, just stories for the sake of stories. We just focus on quality stories about you know, how Indies survived the pandemic or why clients want to work with Indies or why, uh, and we do our profile pieces of our um, of our CEOs. So we've, uh, we've got a list of everyone and we're slowly working through our list every Tuesday. So tomorrow you should see the next profile of an IMAA uh, leader. We're also going to working with um, ad news about agency profiles. So do a profile of an IMAA agency every week as well. Educating our members. Uh, we've done weekly insights and innovation series and I encourage everyone to sign up for those, to share those because you know, we've got some fantastic coming th coming things coming through the pipes next year. It's going through to the next level and we really encourage everyone to tune. It's really, really valuable. It's not a sales pitch. It's about what your clients need to know. So share it with all your staff. Beck's going to be sending out next year's calendar uh, within the next couple of weeks. Leadership training. We're going to, we've got uh, a whole bunch of things happening with the leadership training. So the changes to the data laws that everyone needs to be across. Stephen Von Munzer is going to be doing that, I believe, in February. And then we're going to roll back around the how to grow your business leads organically via LinkedIn with the world leader in that coming through. We've also got masterclasses with Sparrow, pitching in a pandemic and new business generations. We've housed these on our on our channel for our, and our YouTube channel. So they're there and we'll do something next year for it as well. Business training and guidance. Um, um, as I mentioned before, we've got a multitude of things coming through. And then finally, our newsletters. Make sure everyone's on the newsletters and make sure you engage with them. And also our closed LinkedIn group for our CEOs and leaders. Make sure you're involved with those because it's really important to, um, to keep update because we're constantly calling out for who wants to make a comment in this, who wants to make a comment in that. So that's our short turnaround piece. Um, a couple of first, we need a world first trade credit insurance deal. I think we've got about 30 of our IMAA members signed up to that. If you have an appetite for getting a 75% discount of trade credit insurance, it's a cracking deal. Some agencies have saved, you know, up to $80,000 on this deal. We've also got our deal for third party. We're working through these. So Nielsen, Roy Morgan, Wark, um, Amobi, Digital Brief. We've got a whole bunch of deals. In February, we're going to launch 12 more. 12 more deals and they're going to be awesome. Some of the deals are just straight out free stuff. So uh, watch out for that announcement coming as we start the new year. Our campaign. So we did our first ever campaign. This was done by the great uh, BCM and Phil McDonald did this. Uh, they did a phenomenal job and our partners helped out. So putting it in a snapshot, we did over $3 million worth of, uh, worth of advertising and that equated down to, and I'm not a mathematician, I'm going to put that in front of everything I say, but that equates to about $30,000 per uh, per agency member for advertising for you guys. I know of six um, clients that have come through this channel for our members, so we hope you guys have seen some business for it. Here is a quick snapshot. Basically, we were talking and educating about the benefits of working with indie leaders uh, and indie agencies. Uh, and what the benefits are of working with an IMAA member. And then if they come through to us, they get put through to your directory and they find you through that way. Uh, a quick snapshot of what was done in display. Uh, we had close to 10 million um, impressions uh, over the period of time. And you can see many of these things are still active at the moment and are still continuing. In terms of video, you know, we had over 700,000 impressions um, and, uh, and, you know, over $40,000 worth 
there. Radio was phenomenal. We had, um, you can see some of our, all of our partners pretty much came to the table there. You know, SEA did a fantastic job uh, delivering 2.6 million people. I got a call most nights saying someone, someone heard it. From a print point of view, it was great to see, um, you know, our partners at ACM really coming to the table here. And I saw it in my own local newspaper, a full page color uh, to the tune of $30,000. So it was great to see that. Out of home, out of home was fantastic. Out of home delivered $2.6 million um, um, worth around the country on buses, uh, in buildings uh, and on building tops. And Phil's just joined us. Phil, thank you very much for your uh, support in bringing this campaign uh, to life. You and the guys at BCM did a fantastic job. We also did uh, a tremendous amount of networking uh, in Melbourne, in Brisbane, but unfortunately we were shut down by, uh, by lockdowns and weren't around to get around. But next year we'll be in Brisbane, we'll be in Melbourne, uh, we'll be in Sydney having networking drinks. Um, and the program kicks off on the 14th, obviously, with the Christmas party. Um, we also did partner events. This was a, a white paper that Think Premium Digital did, um, which was great to be part of. And we'll roll these out as a place for this next year. And then we had a partner breakfast for our partners to say thank you for keeping our lights on and keeping our members, members membership so low. Um, providing inserts, uh, research. So we do our pulse survey. This is what you're about to see this morning. And then, and that gives a lens onto the industry. There's been quite a bit of trade press about this in the last um, uh, seven days. And then we also do our salary survey. Now, I understand, I think we had about 30 um, of our members participate. We would love to see more next year. It basically tells you guys confidentially what, um, uh, what, what staff are being paid for indies, uh, how we're measuring it. And it's really quite important for us to be across the board. So we've done our first one. We'll do the next one in June, and we're really excited about that. So this is our Pulse survey, guys. This is the survey that everyone filled out. This year, we had an 80% increase. But if you're like me, like just from a, a media nerd point of view, it's fascinating. It's a nerd alert. So we're really, really excited to see and share these results. They're absolutely mind-blowing about some of the results you're, you're about to see and apologies about the bad gifts that I'm putting everyone through, but I try to make it more exciting. Obviously it's very confidential, a little bit sensitive, and please excuse uh, this slide. That you, you might be invited to some sort of swingers party or something. Uh, forgive this slide, it's probably the worst use of images I've, we've ever put together. So we had um, 93 agencies um, uh, participate. We had 485 media facing staff participate and 85 CEOs participate or, or, or leaders, so owners as well. So thank you so much for, for leaning in for this. We had a really big increase from the, um, from the last one and it makes what we do, because this is one of the biggest reasons why our partners partner with, because we can provide this information to them. Um, large portion from, um, um, from Sydney, obviously, where we started, but Melbourne and Brisbane is where it's coming from, the growth. And I imagine if we did it today, it'd be significantly more blue and yellow. So the agency owners, uh, firstly, you know, the biggest, and I'm gonna fly through these because we've got a few staff, so a few slides to get through. So firstly, do you expect to put staff on in 2022? This was a big number. This is the biggest canary in the cage for our industry. And to say, basically, are Indies in good shape? Hell yes, we've got 90% are putting on more, um, uh, more staff. So it's a fascinating uh, slide to say, we're in good shape as a sector of the media. And then, you know, hiring, it's a hard time to hire from the talent pool. You know, 57% uh, acknowledge that the talent shortage is real. I was just sharing before that Omnicom, you know, have 128 people short of, of where they need to be. So they're constantly trying to hire. Um, are people having to blow, blow um, uh, is the average, is the market pool in line with the market value? Um, no, 42% say it's not. Now, is everyone back in the office? Is everyone working from home? This is quite interesting and everyone's kind of interested about this. So 58% of our agencies say they've got a work from home or mixed work from home model. If anyone needs more data on any of these things, just reach out to myself or Beth. Then, um, this is a question because this is something we're thinking about for you guys. So would, if the IMAA had an office in Sydney CBD, would you find that of value to utilize? So if you're traveling up from Melbourne, you need to put your bags down, you need to host a, a meeting or do a presentation, you know, you could utilize that. So we're encouraged that over 50% said that. So we're currently exploring our options there. 
and having a space for if you're traveling from Brisbane, Melbourne, or WA, or South Australia, put your bags down, work hot desk there, and use it for a meeting room. In the post-pandemic world, um, uh, how would you like to see your media vendors engage? Um, office presentations, Zoom meetings, and uh, convenient locations around a home uh, residence. So that's what it looks like. Like office presentations are still the number one for everyone. And then, what else can members, um, uh, media vendors, do to help support service and support? So that means quality support, quality updates based on client knowledge. Don't waste people's time quality knowledge and service. And we told all of our media partners about this and give them a score for service. So hopefully collectively we've raised the service for everyone. We know all of our partners are doubling down on Indy because they know we're, that, that, that Indies are growing, but also they know that that service and quality service is what they need. And then data insights and innovation. So anything to help you guys compete play, compete with the top end of town, win a client, hold on a client, make you look smarter than what you are, make you look bigger than what you are, is what we want. So we've worked really hard on those, on delivering that message back to the industry to deliver that. How has the pandemic affected uh, revenue for everyone? It's a mixed bag, guys. So obviously, you know, many of our members, you know, 25% have seen a downturn, but then, you know, 60% of our, of our agencies saw an increase in business year on year. So uh, it's been a mixed bag, but hopefully everyone is starting to now turn the corner. And next year, you know, we know from our figures that I've seen and what we're going to come out with the SMI, that Indies are going to have a screamer next year. Until they put up um, interest rates, until consumer confidence turns, it's going to be a great year and we need to make hay while the sun shines. And then where the money's going to fall, so this is helps the, the partners in terms of their forecasting. But we know that 85% are estimating a considerable or slight growth next year, which is absolutely fascinating. Uh, Q3 is probably the biggest one, you know, considering that both Sydney and Melbourne were in lockdown for Q3. So year on year, it's going to be the strongest one, but massive numbers for that. Where is the industry going in terms of in investment into channels? For, for Indy, C CTV and BVOD for the last two surveys has been the number one thing. Um, fascinating to see that through. And then video, 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 video. You can see video pumping through. And we've asked another question later on about video, but video is the number one thing coming through. And then all the digital channels uh, and social channels. So that's where the money's going. It's quite interesting. Everyone else is gonna have a good run, um, but you can see that video and BVOD CTV is where the money's going. Challenges. Everyone's having challenges with staff. We know many of our members can't even put on new clients till you know halfway through next year because they can't find staff until the borders are open. And then increased costs. I mean, increased costs of digital providers where they've put up their supplier costs and reluctancy from clients to pay for it. How do um, how do how do you guys find out about what's happening with the industry? So trade news newsletters is number one. And then um, the IMAA is number two, which is really, really exciting. And we've jumped a few spaces for that from, from a personal point of view. That's on the back of uh, all the great work that Beck does uh, in terms of the newsletters, in terms of the communications on our LinkedIn, uh, and, and just putting out information constantly. We encourage everyone to, 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 to open the newsletters to see because that's where we stockpile a lot of information. If it's just something that we don't think is useful for you guys, it will not be put in there, but often see it's offers and, and, and stuff like that. Partner questions, so our partners put on questions that I think you'll find it interesting in here. What is the biggest hesitation when adopting uh, social and digital platforms, time uh, and measurement, trust, and then education? I mean, who wants to educate, be educated on another system or tool? Uh, so they're the three big ones that come out of it. This one is a fascinating question. So it goes back to where the money's going. So the number one thing, the role of video increasing or decreasing in, um, in the next uh, 12 months, 100% of our members said it's increasing. 100% guys. We asked the question later on, uh, are you familiar with the IMAA? Like 2% of our members don't know who we are, although they fill out our survey, but 100% of everyone loves video. I find it fascinating. Uh, so, you know, that's just quite interesting about where the money's going to. And then what's the most important metric for, uh, for clients? ROI, and then you've got your, your, your digital ones. So, you know, C, CTV, CPM, CPC, CPA, CPL and then VTR. Uh, so that's just the metrics, it's a real mixed bag there. 
are you planning on growing your multimedia uh, digital strategy? And this is what we're talking about when it comes to display digital or native or digital at a home or BVOD CTV or digital radio. You know, 68% are saying yes. So I really kind of encourage everyone to keep an eye on this because I believe that within the next five years, you know, all media will be coming through aut automatically through digital pipes in some capacity. So we've got to keep an eye on this as a real trend of where the market's going. Do you see, um, uh, does your agency have a trading desk or do you outsource it? Majority of people, uh, no, they don't, but then we've got a good 38% uh, say they, um, uh, they do. And then, you know, if you were to build one, then um, where do you see it going? So it's a mixed bag of managed, co-managed, uh, outsourced to a tech partner, and then they, that, you know, they don't plan to build one. Do you have a plan for the Cookulous future? 63% uh, say yes. Uh, I suggest everyone kind of look into this because it'll be with us before we before we know it, unless Google change their mind again. Um, when you think about improving uh, or deepening your partnerships uh, with the media, what are the most meaningful things? So it's uh, access to data, anything to make us look better, win more business is really, really important for us. And then market updates. We need to be on top of everything. So we've communicated this back to our media partners on your behalf. And this was encouraging for us, um, you know, which of the following media groups are you aware of? Um, but we do have 2% of people who don't know who we are, Beck, that we've got to work on. Um, but this is, uh, you know, a look at who we need to uh, work with, some of the newer ones uh, uh, further down there. And then what sort of a job are they doing in terms of performance? Uh, we were honoured and, 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 and touched to see that we, uh, in the eyes of you guys, are perceived to be doing a good job and we'll continue that and encourage us to put our shoes on each morning and, and get up and do a better job. But thank you for, uh, for, for your feedback on that. Um, do you have any concerns about uh, buying outdoor transit? So no one said no to that. Now, this is the media facing data. Um, uh, so this is where we asked everyone, and this is fascinating, right, guys? So the biggest topic in the industry at the moment is how likely uh, are you to remain in your current workplace or media industry? Now, there's big talk about the great resignation. This survey tells us that 85% of everyone in, in, in the indie sector is likely or highly likely to stay where they are in the workplace, which is fascinating. It's fascinating to see this because and it's a great story to say that indies are a happier place to work than maybe the battery hen style places of the large multi multinationals. So congratulations for uh, for everyone working in a, in a, in a place where um, uh, where your staff are happy. And then, what? Why are people happy? It's culture and community. So I encourage everyone to lean into it. I encourage everyone to you know make that the central point of your of your people and culture. Um, when you when you move forward. So this is the data scoring. Now there's a bunch of slides here, guys. So I'm gonna go through them really, really fast because um, um, there's a lot of slides, but it's gonna give you a snapshot of the industry. It's gonna tell you where everyone sits. Uh, it's, again, if, if you're a bit of a media nerd, it's gonna show you who's doing it well and who's doing not. So we asked six questions and we gave everyone a score. Now we're not gonna dive into all the scores. We're just gonna show you a visual representation of who does it well and who not does it well. Uh, we give them a score for, for what they do. This we have seen, uh, from Beck and I's eyes, have seen that it has raised the quality of service at you guys because everyone's trying to improve this. People negotiate now their pay increases based on this survey. This survey is, um, and that's why it's so important that everyone fills it out. So we show them, the, their score out of five, we show them the score against, for example, digital, and then we show them the score for the industry. It's done by a mathematician out of the University of New South Wales, Professor Justin Lees, who the methodology is stable enough to last to the future. To the future. So when we annoy you again in June, this is why we do it. So overall, we asked all of the owners to say who's the best in town, like who is the best of the best when it comes to um, uh, service and relationships proactivity, innovation, value for money, data and insights, and effectiveness. Radio came out number one, done by uh, Outdoor. These two are number one and two throughout the um, throughout the year. I think uh, cinema had a cracking go as well. I mean, poor guys didn't have, Guy Burbridge didn't have too much to, uh, to sell, but they've done a wonderful job of just making themselves um, uh, relevant and endearing themselves with it. These are the top 10 um, um, of the media that did well. So, 
these are the guys who you voted that are the best of the industry uh, and we've collectively said they've done a great job and they've um, um, they've done this outdoor radio lead the uh, lead the pile of these guys so service and relationships from an industry point again as well we are looking at uh, radio and outdoor um, are the, the numbers why we've seen these numbers come down over the past four surveys then we looked at uh, this was TV so the average for TV was 3.88, nine was leading this. They've consecutively lead this space. They're very good at it. They do great work with Independence Day. This was rate, uh, this was print, uh, and in terms of uh, premium content, again, um, nine did a good job. And this was digital. We've got a lot of digital partners, and you can see the ones leading the space there. Um, the ones who did well, you know, uh, Quantcast, Service and Relationships did well, Spotify did well, and TikTok, uh, and the Trade Desk as well. Probably the Trade Desk probably did just tick, tick tock a little bit but tick tock as we've seen later on in the presentation are the darlings of the uh, of the industry at the moment the new kids on the block and they're doing quite well so that's the average for uh, for digital this was for radio sea topped that um this was for uh outdoor so outdoor did really really well jc deco and uh, and i always fight this spot out so they've done a really really good job last survey we did jc1 this time o1 and then when we did cinema, um, cinema's class by its own, so they did quite well this one. And then for research, GWI had a positive um, from their last survey. Ideas and proactivity, I'm gonna burn through this radio, did it quite well. Um, these numbers have you know, stuck about from where they are from the last four surveys. Then when we go down to TV, again, it is channel nine that's leading the way. Um, Channel 9 leading the way when it comes to um, their, their, their print and premium content. From a digital point of view, you know, there's there's probably four businesses there that do quite well. Digital, um, um, TikTok, Trade Desk and, uh, and Quantcast. From a radio point of view, SEA does it well. From at a home, O's really kind of got the, the measure there. Val Morgan and, and GWI. Innovation. This is quite interesting. Innovation Radio has told a really good story this year. Um, and we've seen these numbers come down. I think it's because like innovation and ideas, sorry, innovation and data and insights kind of go hand in hand, I think in a way, and people might not be investing in that. So we've seen a bit of a downturn over the past four surveys. Channel 9, again, leading the way from its, uh, from its competitors, again, leading the way when it comes to print and premium content. When it comes to digital, um, TikTok and the Trade Desk lead the way in this space. Um, I was quite surprised that the, the number wasn't high for digital as an average, you know, because they are innovative just by the nature of digital. You would think it would be higher, right? Um, and then when it comes to radio, uh, SEA do really, really well from a um, outdoor JC and oh, JC have got a really strong offering with, uh, with, their, with their programmatic. Uh, so they're probably neck and neck with our from an innovation point of view, um, this is what Val Morgan looks like and GWI, they're there or thereabouts, the industry average. Value proposition. Now this is fascinating, like how much do you guys pay for your media is fascinating. So you can see the uh, two mediums that are most affected by the audience migration over the past, you know, past, um, um, past 18 months. And you can see these numbers coming down because as we start to emerge from the pandemic, you know, the value, the deals aren't out there as much as they used to be. So you can see from the last survey slightly up, but coming down holistically from the first survey when we were in hard lockdown. Um, you can see what um, uh, what TV pays. You can see Channel 10 working hard for that. From a, um, uh, from a print and premium contact, you can see ACM lifting their hand up. Facebook's perceived to be quite good value and also uh, the trade desk. From a digital point of view and then when you look at SCA is probably leading the space in um, in radio where they where they're being perceived as being cheap uh, from an outdoor point of view you know look they're pretty much neck and neck for everyone JC Deco is perceived as being slightly more premium which I think everyone agrees with um, but O is probably leading the race there but it's there or thereabouts um, from a cinema point of view and from a research point of view it's there or there about the industry average Data and insights, as I mentioned before, we've seen this come down um, for the past surveys. I think it's kind of with hand in hand with innovation and the downturn of that one. Maybe people were more focused about keeping bums on seats and people employed rather than, than actually, you know, investing into data or research, research tools uh, and innovation. 
And you can see radio kind of sticking its head up there and, and digital starts to perform a little bit better. From a, um, from a TV point of view, you know, Nine doing it well, their collective data pool's quite interesting from the, you know, and it's got to jump on everyone else. From a, um, from a data and insights point of view, both Nine and, uh, and News do it well. And then from a digital point of view, the trade desk is, has, has got a little bit of a, uh, probably the highest one, uh, and then followed by Quantcast, which is cool. Um, radio, ARN, uh, and SEA, probably neck and neck. And then from an outdoor point of view, you know, the two big guys, uh, uh, O and, and JC Deco are going pretty much neck and neck there. For, um, we've got cinema and then we've got uh, research there. This is the last selection of slides on this, guys. I promise you we'll be out of this component in a few seconds. So effectiveness, how effective is media? How effective is um, the, the likes of, of, of all the media? From an industry point of view, radio and outdoor, I find this fascinating. They're the two probably more traditional medias. They are the highest ones. And then you can see that um, the digital, with all the accountability of digital, is not as high as the, as the more traditional medias. Uh, Channel 9 is leading the way from an effectiveness point of view. And, and again, when it comes to print and premium content, from, a, um, from an effectiveness point of view, the trade desk does really well, TikTok does well, and then followed by, and also Facebook does really, really well, but Facebook service, as we all know, lets, them down, lets themselves down a little bit uh, when it comes to their service, but their product's good. And then a neck and neck race from radio, just a straight fall from across everywhere. So they're doing it really, really well. Uh, and all pretty much neck and neck. And then outdoor, again, they do really, really well. Outdoor in the eyes of, of you guys, they're perceived to be doing really, really well. Cinema uh, works well. And then from a, from a research point of view, that's the sta industry standard. Now guys, thank you so much everyone for participating in that. Now someone's gonna win a, uh, a iPhone, I watch seven, uh, the brand new one. They get to choose their design. They get to choose which wristband they've got. Drum roll, please. The winner is Bella from Impressive uh, down in Victoria. Uh, so, Bella, if you're on the line, put your hand up and say hello. If not, I'll reach out to you. It's uh, Isabella Loverick uh, from Impressive. Um, so we'll reach out to her and get a brand new iPhone watch to her. So congratulations and thank you for everyone for participating and filling it out. We're just going to give you a little bit of a roadmap of what's happening next year. We are beyond excited about what's happening and beyond. Um, um, we're, we're changing gears into a place where not only we're, we're making noise for Indies, we do that well now, but now we're making our industry a better place and something that we're really, really proud of, um, that we're all proud to work for. And I'd like to talk to you about this three key points. Firstly, we're coming back bigger, better and stronger. So the first thing is education. We are, guys, an industry that learns on the job, right? We're an industry that learns on the job. And over the past 18 months, we have not learned on the job. So we need to educate the next generation of people coming through. We've seen people leave our industry because they haven't been engaged. We need to educate. And collectively, we've got a really, really exciting um, uh, plan for everyone. Secondly, and this is something that uh, myself, uh, Beth, and all the leadership team are really passionate about, it's making our industry a better place. It's making our industry better than what we found it. And as a group and as a sector and as your industry body, we've got a very, very strong plan around this. And then we're bringing back physical events. We want everyone to lean into this. And we're gonna talk about these three points quickly now. Firstly, in the first half of next year, we're gonna launch the IMAA Academy, right? This is for training for zero to five years experience. Or if you've got someone joining your business they can do the IMAA Academy. It's training of media. So you can do a digital course, you can do a one-on-one -on -one of media course, you can do an outdoor course, you can do a cinema course. It's video. Now, each one of these courses are gonna be designed by an industry leader, so the framework is solid. And then each one of the courses are gonna be done by the industry body, so they're non-biased. This is the first time anyone has attempted this in Australia. And once we get this right, it's gonna be rolled out towards um, uh, university leavers as well. But it's gonna set the standard for education. So you look at someone coming out of university, they put their hand up and go, oh, I've done the IMAA you know, bridging course, I've done the IMAA 101 of digital, 
and we'll probably move into digital program, digital performance, digital social as well at a later point. But it's a heavy investment, guys. We are hip. We are investing a considerable amount into this, and it's for you guys. So we're really excited to launch this. Once you do the course, your guys get to put a little badge onto their uh, LinkedIn or onto their CV to say they've done the 101 of media, they've done the one of one of digital. Once you do all of the eight courses, if you want to do all eight courses, then you get the, the black belt of Kung Fu media and you get to put that onto your CV. So we're really excited about this. We work with um, um, the guys from uh, Anthony Douglas from Love and we also work with who's chairing this is Angie Smith from uh, Media Smith who are, uh, and also Beck and myself um, leading this and chairing this and kind of bringing this to life. There's a lot of work. No one gets paid for it. So we're doing this for you and it's got to be done right. So we're really excited to launch this next year. When you guys go through it, the media is going to provide graduation parties and graduation gifts and stuff. So everyone is really, really excited about this next year. First half, watch out. Next one, making our industry a better place. This is probably why uh, a lot of us do what we want to do because it's it's creating a better place for our industry. The first thing that we've started is our diversity council. The diversity council is our duty as a modern industry body to put a spotlight on equality, on inclusion and diversity. And I'm going to talk about this in the next slide just quickly, as well as a reconciliation plan. A reconciliation is something really hard for, for, for small businesses because it's, it's a complex difficult way to navigate. Beck's done a wonderful job and Steve Fagan's done a wonderful job in bringing this to life. And I'll talk about what this looks like shortly. They're our first two projects we're working on. There's a difference between talking about and working on and there's a difference between bringing to life. And there's a big, there's a big difference in the work that's involved. These two projects are now alive. The second one is future talent. We know how hard it is to find good talent coming into the industry. So collectively, we're going to be leaning into our leaders of the IMAA to work together to speak at universities to attract the best talent and say, it's a wonderful place to work, working in um, uh, an independent agency, and this is why. So we're going to be talking to universities and attracting the best talent into our industry. And then the final part is the FOTI group. This is kind of, if you're familiar with... Um, um, Engen, it's kind of like the play on this. We've got to make it fun to work in media. We know, guys, that that if you're a media in, in the last couple of years, it's been tough, it, particularly if you're in a junior position, it's, it's a tough place because normally you get to go out to have drinks, you get to have lunch once a week, or you might get to go to Lady Gaga on the weekend. Now it's a tough place. So what we're doing is we're making it fun again. And we've got a whole bunch of ideas. We're going to be setting up committee for these two, Future Talent and FOTI. Uh, so watch out for that's probably H2 next year. But I want to talk about Diversity Council a little bit more. We have got um, 10, is it 10? 10 or 12 leaders now. Uh, these fine people, we've had our first meeting from all over Australia, from all sorts of backgrounds. And we're talking to, we're working together to put a spotlight on what we need to change. Also, guys, what's really important is that, um, you know, when we do our salary surveys as well, um, we're going to be asking permission to kind of keep an eye from this point of view so we can work and ask some questions about uh, about diversity. So we're really excited about, about this. But I want to thank these guys for their, for their um, uh, energy and passion and making our industry a better place. We will be doing more on this and we'll be talking more about it as we go forward. I also want to thank everyone that's put their hand up for it because it was such a hard task um, um, d selecting the people and we just had to have the right balance from a, from a state point of view, from an industry side, from a leadership, from a background. It was a tremendously hard. So I want to thank you, everyone. And we're going to be rotating um, this every 12 months uh, to see if anyone else wants to join in as well. So just stay, stay engaged, guys. There's going to be space for everyone. Reconciliation, as I mentioned, uh, I want to thank Beck and, and also uh, Steve Fagan for their, for their work on this. So currently we're implementing a wrap and focusing on three key areas, the way that we can put everyone, all of our agencies under a umbrella plan. So, you know, when it comes to your tenders where it says, what are you doing for reconciliation? Or just if you're asked by an employer, like, what do you do for reconciliation? You have an opportunity to say, we're part of the IMAA's reconciliation plan. So there's three parts to it. From an education point, we're empowering and educating our members by creating a hub, 
a single place for where you can go to to uh, to be educated to do courses at discounted rates. Uh, but it's a pathway to understand um, the First Nation people. Influence. So we're encouraging our um, um, our members to uh, to be to, to evolve and develop our RAP and provide you know learning opportunities for you know learning opportunities for for, for their staff and, and and offers and ways that we can influence uh, First Nation people and also their businesses as well by you know we're going to be offering a, a directory for um, uh, for ways that you can find you know if you're going to so for example how do you support First Nation people you can either organise paper from Office Works or you can get it from a First Nation business. You know those little things that we just need to kind of work together as a group and then finally on the ground support so we're going to be working with Impaja. uh 10 percent of all revenue of our members goes through that's going to go to an INAA charity for it's on the ground so I, we think it might be dialysis machines for people who need them in central australia indigenous people so they don't have to travel three or four hours a week you know, to a hospital and then back again to go on a dialysis machine for six hours. So we're going to be working with ways that affects, you know, possibly some of the young people out there. We're also looking at scholarships. We're also looking at um, uh, ways that we can help. But watch this space. We're going to be making an announcement um, at, the, at the, the, I guess, I think it's probably towards the start of next year. And then finally, we're encouraging all of our 117 members to sign up to our um, to our uh, to our reconciliation charter, this charter will have all of our, our leaders' signatures on there, and we're going to be making a real difference—not just a talking difference, but a difference to say that we're changing lives, and we're going to be able to see from our own charity about what it does. But it's only going to be successful if we all get part of it, and it's not going to be hard to do. It's just going to be education, influence, and supporting. If anyone does any, you know, TV buying or, or digital buying, I guess, uh, you know. Think about putting in pages on there. Ten percent goes to our uh, to our charity. Oh, events! This is so exciting. So we've got two people we're interviewing at the moment to run our events. This is going to be we're encouraging everyone to do uh, to lean into it. There's a number of things we're doing. So firstly, we've got our Christmas party. It's going to be the most extravagant party I've possibly ever seen in my life and ever attended. Um, we've got our um, a, a, an event every single month, whether it's a networking event, whether it's an education event for your staff, we've got an event happening every single month uh, around Australia. We're going to have the first event is going to be our Operation Bounce Back. I hope it's in everyone's diary for the 17th of February. It's in Sydney. It's going to be streamed in every single state. It's going to be what indies need to know going into 2022. Um, so lean into that. I hope to have you there. It's going to be at Broadway Hoyt Cinema, um, we believe at this point, and um, it's going to be bloody good. We're going to have all the industry bodies speaking, all of our partners, and it's going to be the first time anyone's ever attempted anything like this. It's a lens for indies, what indies need to know. This is a look at our dance card for the year. It's very, very busy. We're all over the country. We've got training. We've got ca more campaigns next year. We're going to be celebrating diversity. We've got an amazing event uh, for International Women's Day um, hosted by JC Deco. Watch this space. We've got so much happening. So we're going to talk about more of these things. There's too much to go through right now. Finally, maximizing your membership. This is the last slide, I promise, guys. So maximizing your membership. Use your certificate. You know, you guys are a select group. We have knocked back seven agencies now who wanted to join the IMAA because they didn't reach the high standard of you guys. So to be a part of an IMAA member, it's not just a way of paying a, paying them out or, or or supplying your logo. We don't really care. We've got enough money. We don't really want another logo. We want quality agencies. You guys are the best of the best. We've personally qualified you. We've personally, you know, done reference tests. You guys are the best. So be proud of this. Be proud of this badge because many can't have it. Secondly, it's um, uh, access. So lean into the programs. Lean into you know the training programs, the insights and innovation series, the PR opportunities. Guys, if nothing else, right this year when we speak to about the training, when we speak about the Sparrow training, when we speak about the Graham Webster interview, they said the number one things indies can do is work on your profile because if you're down to a handful of agencies, if they don't know who you are. They'll just cross you out straight away. So long, you know, years ago, it was like, oh, we're happy just flying under the radar. No one can fly under the radar anymore. Work on your profile. I am constantly annoying you guys saying, who wants to make a comment about SMI? Who wants to make a comment about the upfronts? Who wants to make a comment about, you know, Yahoo's logo change? 
get your profile out there. This is our job to lift everyone and to make a noise. So lean into that when you see that. If you're not part of the closed LinkedIn group or you don't look at it enough, please look at it. Secondly, our newsletter. Our newsletter is designed for you guys and we put a lot of effort into it. We've only got, I think we've got about 500 uh, people on the, on the database at the moment. If your team aren't on there, please put it on there. So um, uh, contact back with your staff list, but it's really important that, that you guys engage and, 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 um, and read that because there's a lot of information that's really cool in there for Indies. Our partner program, for example, the Facebook IMAA University is massive. Their, their emerging leaders training course is worth about two and a half thousand dollars a piece. So lean into that, put your staff through it. We're about to launch our training hub. So all of these trains, all of these things that you guys can do, you know, they're going to be housed in there. So you can go through the trading desk, you can go to LinkedIn, you can go to Spotify, you can go to Facebook, and then there's going to be the IMAA Academy housed in there. So we want this to be your one-stop shop for training. You've got new staff, you want to engage your staff, this is how you do it. LinkedIn leaders group. So yeah, lean into the leaders group, check it out uh, where possible. You've all been, been invited to it. You should have been. If you're not, make sure you tap into Vec and myself to get tapped into it. Saving money. Guys, um, uh, you know, I'm half Scottish, so uh, I love saving money for everyone. So, you know, <laughs> what I want uh, is people to lean into the third party deals. I want everyone to um, uh, register where our registers are on our directories if you haven't done it. I think we've only got about 94, so there's probably a good 20 agencies that haven't done it. Um, trade credit insurance deals, or when we announce our third party deals, there's gonna be 12 new deals in February. Tune into that, there's ways to save you money. Our goal, you know, you're our bosses, our goal is to save you guys money collectively. So we're very, very passionate about that and we negotiate on behalf of the industry, so lean into that. And then weekly training guys, you know, we have, I think, 1,600 members or 1,600 staff collectively under the IMAA umbrella. When we do webinars like this, we only get sometimes, you know, 20 or 30. Get you guys to lean into it because, you know, we're only going to continue to order if everyone's leaning into it. And it's really, really important that um, that we can share the, the you know, the, the knowledge because we brief all of our members, they all, there's something new each week, whether it's podcast, whether it's this, whether it's that, lean into it please, because it's a really strong way of learning and upskilling ourselves. And if there's any feedback, if there's anything better that we can do, if there's anything more that you guys want or, or webinars, let us know because we will do it because we do it for you guys. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I've chewed your ears off for, uh, for 52 minutes. My apologies. I want to say thank you again to the um, my partner in crime, uh, Beck, for all her hard work. Um, the, the leaders who, who champion all the diversity and reconciliation events. Um, Phil, Phil for doing a fantastic job on the um, on the uh, on the campaign. I want to thank the directors for keeping us all on the straight and narrow and keeping our um, uh, our purpose true. I want to thank. Uh, Steve Fagan, I want to thank Tom as well for their championing down in um, down in, in Victoria and growing that sector. I want to thank everyone for being part of it. Um, I think that that we're only as strong as as, as, our, as our members and we've changed the industry. Next year, we're going to make it something really proud and something fantastic that we're actually going to change uh, to make a sector that we're really proud to be part of when we talk about reconciliation, when we talk about equality. We're going to be really, really proud of this. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Have a safe Christmas. If I, for those coming tomorrow, enjoy the boat. I'll see you there. But thank you so much. Uh, have a safe Christmas.